What's up guys, Derek from MorePlaysMoreDates.com. Today we're going to be talking about the echocardiogram results before and after a low-dose DECA-only cycle. So this study in particular looked at the effects of DECA monotherapy um, and exactly what happened in the heart before and after taking it, which obviously is something we would all want to know about because most people don't even look at their blood work, let alone get actual um, scans of their heart done. So to see how DECA um, in a, you know, cycle context actually affects the heart is, I feel like insightful and worth, you know, exploring further. Okay. So this is the same study as my last video where I looked at the poly drug regimens of several enhanced individuals. And in the second study conducted in this overall assessment of cardiac structure and function and strength athletes, study two. Um, evaluated what kind of effect eight weeks administration of nandrolone decanoate had on blood pressure, heart morphology, and function. So in this, nandrolone decanoate was administered 200 milligrams a week for eight weeks and 16 bodybuilders in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled design. In all subjects, M-mode and two-dimensional Doppler echocardiography was performed at baseline and after eight weeks of use. As far as what the echocardiographic examinations included, I already kind of went over these in the last video if you want to get up to speed on that. I basically just read through all of these, but this is gonna be a bit of a shorter video than the last one because a lot of the metrics and the outcomes are pretty similar, to be honest. Basically, it was designed to investigate the effects of Organon's Decadurabolin. So this is obviously you know, one of the most classic and most popular steroids on earth on heart morphology and function. 16 well-trained recreational bodybuilders volunteered for the study and they were randomly assigned either DECA or placebo. In both groups, two subjects had previous experience with anabolic use, whereas the remainder had never used such substances before. Physical and training characteristics are presented in table one. Once a week, the bodybuilders visited the lab to get a shot of intramuscular nandrolone decanoate, 200 milligrams, or placebo for eight weeks. Injections were administered by one of the investigators. The echocardiographic measurements were performed at baseline after eight weeks. So in table one, we can see in the nandrolone decanoate group, we have nine individuals. In the placebo group, we have seven. Age, roughly the same, 33, 31. Height, roughly the same, 175 centimeters, 177 centimeters. Body weight, Decent amount different. We have 76 kilograms for the nandrolone group, 83.8 for the placebo. Body fat percentage, 15.3 for the nandrolone group, 17.6 for the placebo. 7.4 hours of training per week um, versus 9.1 for placebo. Training experience, 7.3 years for nandrolone, 6.4 for placebo. So at baseline, the physical characteristics were comparable between most groups for blood pressure, echocardiographic measurements, training, physical characteristics, etc echocardiographic determination of LVEDD and LVM, which is left ventricular end diastolic diameter and left ventricular mass were significantly different between both groups at the start. Eight week administration of nandrolone did not induce significant alterations in blood pressure and echocardiographic measurements of heart morphology, nor in parameters reflecting systolic and diastolic cardiac function. So you can see here at baseline, the anabolic users had, in the nandrolone group, had 133 systolic. At eight weeks, it dropped to 128. In the placebo group, started at 130. By eight weeks, dropped to 123. Diastolic at the start for the nandrolone group was 83. At the end of the eight weeks, was 80. Placebo group started at 84, ended at 78. Now, as far as the echocardiographic measurements at baseline after eight weeks for the nandrolone groups, you can see here, and frankly, there's not much of a difference. So I'm not going to go through all these individually like I did in the last video. But basically, the conclusion was that the administration of a high dose of nandrolone to canoate for eight weeks did not affect cardiac structure and function as determined by echocardiography. The same applied for the use of high dose anabolics for the Polydrug regimens found in the 8 to 16 week cycles in study number one, which I went over in the last video. So from the nandrolone study, we can conclude that the short term administration of anabolics does not lead to detectable echocardiographic alterations in heart morphology, systolic and diastolic function in experienced strength athletes. And this applies for the administration of a high therapeutic dose, 200 milligrams per week of a single anabolic steroid nandrolone decanoate for eight weeks, as well as the polydrug regimens found in the super physiological dosages for 16 weeks in study one. So again, the same conclusion as the last video in terms of what I think has the most deleterious impact on 
heart morphology and function and bodybuilding. I think the first thing is body weight, especially lean body mass. Um, obviously being fat isn't good either, but being jacked out of your tree at 270 plus lean or even 240 lean. If you are, you know, five foot 10 and you weigh 240 plus shredded, like think about how much strain that is on your cardiovascular system, the amount of blood and oxygen you need to support that tissue. It is significant. And then on top of that, resting heart rate and blood pressure, blood pressure being a no brainer that most people know about. If you are walking around with high blood pressure, it's going to rear its ugly head down the line in some capacity. And almost everyone, and as far as resting heart rate, this is a commonly overlooked risk factor and is a determinant of early mortality as determined by several studies now, despite some people wanting to believe that if you have less than 100 beats per minute as a resting heart rate, that you're just going to be fine. Being tachycardic versus not does not indicate safe versus safe. Having a 90 beat per minute resting heart rate is not going to be good, in my opinion. And then the next risk factor, I believe, after the body weight is going to be, as well as the blood pressure, and resting heart rate, obviously, is going to be uh, lifestyle practices, diet, um, stuff like that, um, which I delve into why in the last video. And finally, obviously, we have the anabolic use and the growth hormone use and any kind of other performance-enhancing drug use. That may have deleterious impacts to your health. I do not think it simply boils down to you take gear and your heart gets demolished. I think it is a combination of the body weight with the gear, with the predispositions, potentially genetically, with the diet, with the lifestyle, with the heavy training, with the GH, with the everything. I think it all compounds and increases your risk substantially between all of the things. I do not think it simply boils down to, oh, you took gear, therefore you have the same risk as a 250 pound bodybuilder, even though you're 175 on, you know, like a high normal dose of TRT. I, I do not think that is the case. It doesn't mean you're risk free. But I think that it does not simply boil down to anabolic use versus not anabolic use. So take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Again, if you want to dig into the study, it is called Prospective Echocardiographic Assessment of Androgenic Anabolic Steroid Effects on Cardiac Structure and Function in Strength Athletes. And this breaks down not only the DECA monotherapy study, but it also breaks into the polydrug regimens of 17 anabolic users that used a myriad of different compounds bought underground or through pharmacies for evaluation of their heart function and morphology before and after their cycles. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as I do post some stuff there that is uh, hopefully worth following that is not going to be on the YouTube. So at more plates underscore more dates for the Instagram. Um, Facebook organic reach is fucking trash. So if you could follow me there, that'd be cool. BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, Snapchat. The Apple Podcast is basically just audio rips of these videos. So if you like to listen in the car, you don't want to burn through your data on YouTube, whatever it is, I recommend you subscribe there as you can just listen whenever you want and download the audios or use way less data and listen to them. And if you could drop a five-star rating there, that helps the algorithm there, I believe. So that'd be much appreciated. If you want to support the channel, Check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, my TRT clinic. If you want to seek out hormone optimization, if you have any deficiencies or imbalances or just want to see if you have any to begin with that may need addressing, um, I would recommend reaching out to them, have a patient care coordinator look at your situation, and then you can get your bloods done, um, get a physical, and get evaluated by a follow-up through the doctor over Zoom or Skype or FaceTime or whatever. They do it all over telemedicine you don't actually have to go in to see the doctor in person anywhere which is nice and you get evaluated get assessed and see if you have any deficiencies or imbalances that you may benefit from addressing both in a performance a vitality a quality of life a health a longevity standpoint a myriad of things that they address there it's not just simply you're deficient or you're not and let's you know correct a number on a piece of paper a lot of it boils down to quality of life as well, which is something I'm completely on board with. So I recommend reaching out to them. And if you end up getting medication through them, you can save $50 off your first order with the coupon code in the video description below. If you want to support the new tropics and pre-workouts that I design, it's Gorilla Mode and Gorilla Mind. Those are in the description below as well. New tropics, great if you are an entrepreneur, student, working individual, whatever it is. If you need mental focus, clarity, sharpness, as well as productivity, that's mainly what they're for, the nootropics, and then pre-workout self-explanatory. And I would recommend just comparing your current pre to the label on mine and then seeing how it stacks up. And from there, you can make a more informed decision about whether or not it is worthwhile to switch. 
and anything else I'm associated with, video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.